Orpheus was the son of Apollo, god of music and arts, and his mother was Calliope, muse of epic poetry and eloquence, from them he inherited the gift of music and poetry. If Apollo was the best musician among the gods, Orpheus was the best musician among mortals. A lyre was the most precious gift that Orpheus received from his father Apollo. And with it, Orpheus played the most beautiful melodies that no human being had ever heard before. The music of Orpheus captivated the most beautiful women. Even the singing of the fearsome mermaids were eclipsed by the harmony of his voice. There was no young woman in Thrace who did not dream of having him on their bed. During years Orpheus had been happy with them, while he delighted them with his music. Until one day, of the same nature that had bowed to the divinity of his song, he discovered the most perfect of the creatures, the nymph Eurydice, a spirit with the shape of a woman who lived in forests, rivers and fields. A few seconds were enough. A flash of Eurydice reflected in the water, so that Orpheus would succumb forever to the love of the nymph. When they finally met for the first time, love broke out with such force that there seemed to be no power to be able to keep them apart. But for a long time there was someone else who had succumbed to the beauty of the nymph, a man that had been observing her for years without her realizing his presence. Someone who preferred to see Eurydice dead if she wasn't with him. Without realizing the anger of the one who wanted her so much, the love of Orpheus and Eurydice grew day by day, until it became so strong that they decided to join until the end of their days. But for those who confuse love with madness, the one who swore that Eurydice would only be his, to see her so close to happiness with another, it was too much. The name of that man was Aristeus, the god of the hunters. Desperate, one day that the nymph was by the forest alone, he tried to kiss Eurydice by force. But she rejected him and ran away. Aristeus pursued her. But in the pursuit Eurydice was bitten by a snake. The powerful venom of the snake had ended the life of the nymph at that very moment. In the palace, Orpheus was worried about the delay of his wife. Then he sent his soldiers to look for her, and he was shocked when his soldiers brought her corpse back home. On the banks of the Stramonas River, Orpheus lamented bitterly for the loss of Eurydice. Morning, Orpheus played such sad songs, and sang so plaintively, that all the nymphs and gods wept. Then they advised him to descend to the underworld in search of Eurydice. Orpheus, inconsolable, didn't accept the death of his wife, he decided that to go to the Hades and bring her back. Orpheus traveled to the lagoon Estegia, the gap that separates the world from the living, and the world of the dead, where the doors to the Hades lie. Orpheus knew that no mortal could open the doors of Hades before his final moment arrived. In the river Stygia, in the kingdom of the Hades, Charon the ferryman waits for the living, and on his ship, he leads the living to the dwelling place of the dead. In the grip of an unbearable pain, Orpheus begs to the Charon to take him to the Hades, but he refuses. The gods did not allow the living to live with the dead. Desperate, he played his lyre, and he delivered the saddest ever heard melody. Charon, touched with such beautiful melody, helped Orpheus to cross the lagoon. But this was only the first of the tests which Orpheus must face in order to return to contemplate his beloved. Orpheus, what do you look for in the darkness of Hades? Return to your people. Return to the world of the living. How do you dare to enter the dwelling of the dead? Without having reached your time. This is not your place. Outraged by the audacity of Orpheus, Hades, king of the underworld, 
ordered to capture the intruder and bring him before him. In the presence of Hades, Orpheus found the eyes of Eurydice, and staring at her eyes, spoke to Hades without looking away from his beloved nymph. With his melodious song, Orpheus implored compassion to the king of the dead. And, such a tragical melody was played by Orpheus with his lyre, that, even Hades, king of the underworld, allowed Eurydice to return to Thrace. But, he imposed a single condition. Eurydice must walk after the prince to the world of the living. And Orpheus, should never look back. He would have to trust the word of Hades. If he wanted to see his beloved once again, he must wait until the sun completely touched the body of Eurydice. When the two had completely abandoned the kingdom of the dead, Orpheus accepted the conditions set by Hades. And, he tried to erase from his mind, the certitude of being able to trust in the word of a god. Which kingdom he had invaded. Almost there. Just few more steps, they could see the light of the world of the living. Very soon he would be able to embrace his beloved once again. But, as he walked, doubt invaded Orpheus. The sounds of Hades. It impeded him to feel the steps of his beloved. The idea of the deception of Hades grew by the seconds. And when finally the sounds of Eurydice voice and steps didn't reach his ears, he could not avoid turning to make sure that his beloved followed him. The gazes of the lovers met. The face of Eurydice's was touched by the sun, but her feet still remained in the shadows of the Hades. The condition that Hades had imposed on him, he did not fulfill. As a punishment, Eurydice died a second time, along with the hopes of Orpheus of seeing her again. Orpheus, devastated, had returned to the world of the living, leaving his soul in the world of the dead. He could no longer compose any more songs. He could no longer recite his poetry. He could no longer play his lyre. Orpheus was no longer Orpheus. They say that much later, after he wandered all over Thrace to free himself from his despair, Orpheus lost his life in a strange way, abandoned by the poet since the day he met Eurydice. The women of Thrace thought that now that the nymph have died, Orpheus would return to their arms. They were wrong. Since Orpheus never returned to be the same, his fidelity to the memory of a dead woman was an insult to them all. They all wanted to be loved with the same devotion that he dedicated to Eurydice. Full of anger, they attacked Orpheus, without realizing that they were about to kill the man they loved. Orpheus did not defend himself, knowing that death would be nothing more than a rest for his soul. The body of the poet was smashed to pieces. His soul at last was free. Now being able to go to the Hades, it is said that there, united with Eurydice, he wanders through the melancholy meadows and groves of the kingdom of the dead, singing to love, greater and greater than death.